Um, I need to hand it over to uh, Guillaume Laforge. Not need, but I'm really excited to actually hand it over to Guillaume. Uh, you all know Guillaume. Well, first of all, Guillaume, welcome to DevOx. You. Do you want to have a man, Mike? Yeah. Um, so, Guillaume, we, we, people know you from Groovy, of course. Yeah, people know me a bit more about uh, Apache Groovy. But recently, uh, I joined Google last June. Uh, I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud Platform. And so I'm very happy to be able to use all the cool technologies that we have there. Yeah. And we, I actually saw you in action at Java 1, where you did a yeah. panel on machine yeah, learning and exactly. so on, right? Yeah, that was pretty interesting, uh, along with uh, our friends from uh, IBM and Microsoft. And that was a, a nice discussion. Yeah. And that's how we, uh, we got to... Uh, we, we got connected. So yeah. I said, like, well, Guillaume, you know, it's our theme for this year. You need to really help us out and, and actually tell and come over at the keynote explaining what Google is doing with the... Uh, this exciting uh, environment. So uh, you got a bit of slides. I'll, I'll give the stage to you. Kim. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so your neurons are ready. Okay, all right, let's go. So a little quiz. Uh, everybody uh, will put his hands up uh, if you know what I'm going to speak about. So do you know what this picture is about? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. And you're going to put your hands down uh, when you don't know what it's about. Okay. So next thing. A anybody knows about Google search? Yeah, everybody is using Google search. Keep your hands up. Uh, do you know about this thing called MapReduce, which is being used somehow for big data analysis and that kind of stuff? Yeah, all right, not bad. Uh, do you know about BigTable? Uh, probably a bit less than, no, quite, quite a few, nice. Uh, there have been also open source projects inspired by uh, this uh, famous paper from uh, Google. Another one, a bit harder because it's uh, internal technology at Google, still a few hands up, knowing Spanner, yeah, a few, nice. And this last one, TensorFlow, there have been sessions about TensorFlow, uh, so it's this uh, open source uh, toolkit, let's say, for uh, machine learning, training n neural networks, and there's a common thing behind all these things, all right? And this is Jeff Dean. Jeff Dean is a senior fellow at Google, working for the Google Brain team, uh, our research group. And this guy is behind all those technologies, right? So it's really a, a bright mind. Uh, so unfortunately, we couldn't get him there, but I got a chance to uh, interview him. And I have a, a little video to show you about that. And uh, I got a chance to ask a few questions to Jeff Dean. Let's see a five-minute video about that. Hello, DevOx. I'm Jeff Dean, and I lead the Google Brain team, one of Google's machine learning research teams. I'm here to talk to you about machine learning and how you can use machine learning to solve problems in your organization. One of the things that's really happened in the last five or six years that has caused machine learning to really take off is that we now have enough computational power and large enough interesting real-world data sets to solve problems that previously we weren't able to solve in any other way problems in computer vision and speech recognition and language understanding. In our team, we've been building um, tools for solving machine learning problems and then collaborating with lots of other teams over the last five or six years at Google to solve different machine learning problems. And we've started out collaborating with a handful of teams, the speech recognition team, various teams that had computer vision problems. And then we built infrastructure software that allowed us to solve problems with those teams in machine learning. And then over time, what we discovered is that the same machine learning techniques and algorithms that solve problems in one area could be used in lots and lots and lots of other product areas and product domains. And so what you see is this general explosion of machine learning usage across Google, across now hundreds of teams and thousands of developers using machine learning techniques to solve problems in their areas. And we think that's really because machine learning is so applicable, widely applicable to lots of problems, and because we've built the right tools that enable uh, developers to really uh, go and tackle machine learning problems in their, in their areas. So one of the really nice things about TensorFlow and the Cloud Machine Learning Service is that you, it's very flexible. You can decide to train your model in our data center using our managed Cloud Machine Learning Service. You could train a model on a machine with a bunch of GPU cards under your desk using TensorFlow open source release. 
Uh, and then once you've trained a model, you can take that model and then deploy it in a lot of different settings. You can deploy it on your uh, virtual machines in our cloud environment. You can deploy it in our managed service. You can deploy it in a mobile application by extracting the trained model and then baking it into your mobile app. It's a very flexible thing, and we don't lock you into using our cloud environment for all purposes. You can use it uh, in whatever way makes sense and use the TensorFlow open source release as a way of using it in other environments that are not on our cloud machine learning platform. One of the things that I think is going to be true about machine learning in the next five or 10 years is that uh, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be spread throughout lots and lots of organizations, solving lots and lots of problems in those organizations that are real business needs that can uh, be tackled uh, with machine learning. And you know, if you look back at that graph that Google has about how we started out applying machine learning in a handful of different areas, and then over time, our usage really exploded because we found all the different places we could use machine learning and got more and more of our developers comfortable with how machine learning could be used to solve problems. We think that same kind of transition is going to happen in every organization. There's going to be dabbling with a bit of machine learning in some cases to solve some small problems. And then over time, people are going to become more and more comfortable with it. They're going to be using it to tackle more and more ambitious problems, and it's going to spread throughout the organization. And we think there's going to be hundreds of thousands of organizations impacted by machine learning uh, in the next five or 10 years. There are so many ways that you can get started with machine learning, and I'll just highlight a few of them here today. So one of them is that you can think carefully about what data your organization has and what problems could be solved with machine learning. Second, you can start uh, downloading the TensorFlow open source release and work your way through the tutorials to teach yourself about machine learning or have your developers learn about how machine learning can be used to solve lots of different kinds of problems. You can use our cloud machine learning platform to train TensorFlow models in our cloud environment, which is much more scalable and, and very amenable to a managed experience dealing with lots of data. You can use our pre-trained machine learning APIs for things like computer vision and speech recognition and language translation and language understanding. And if you think carefully about how you can integrate these sorts of, of features and, and capabilities into the kinds of problems you're trying to solve in your organization, you'll find lots and lots of ways. Once you start seeing a way that you can do it, you'll quickly transition to looking at almost every problem through how can, I, how can machine learning help me solve this, this problem. And that's a really powerful and enlightening uh, kind of way to view problems. Thanks, DevOps, for having me. And I look forward to hearing how you use machine learning to solve your problems. So that was Jeff Dean um, uh, showing up, yeah. And all, all those machine learning technologies uh, have also been there behind the. You've heard of, about AlphaGo, this uh, um, this uh, computer uh, Go uh, player uh, that beat uh, the the champion. Lee Seidel, uh, pretty recently. So if you remember back in the day when uh, Deep Blue beat uh, Kasparov, uh, that was some kind of artificial intelligence, but that, that was just uh, you know humans teaching a computer the rules of chess and then uh, brute force uh, throughout the combinations in the search tree uh, space. Uh, here, what's different is that we're, the, 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 we are really teaching, uh, we are not teaching, the, the, the machine learning teaches itself the, the neural networks learns the rules by looking at past games that have been played. And uh, thanks to reinforcement learning, it even plays to get against itself to Im further improve. And that's how uh, we managed to uh, beat the champion, although we thought that beating uh, a human champion was years, uh, not before the, let's say, five or next 10 years that we could do that, but it already uh, happened. And Google even created a special uh, processors, tensor processing unit, TPUs, uh, on a big rack of TPUs uh, to uh, improve even better compared to what we can do with GPUs. And uh, that, that's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, Jeff alluded a little bit to that um, in, in the interview, but uh, in the 80s, there was a kind of AI winter, so neural networks are not new. So although there's still ongoing research on neural networks, refinements in algorithms, etc., uh, the, the big change and why it's making a kind of resurgence these days is because 
first of all, there are much more, many more labeled data sets to learn from, to uh, train your uh, neural networks, to train your models. And the big change is the huge amount of compute capacity that we have and the scalability of it and tools like TensorFlow, which are able to really shard and parallel, parallelize uh, the, the, the load and the, uh, the training and so on. And that's the, what, what changed and that's, uh, you know, basically a, a full circle to improve things. If you look at uh, one example at Google, something like Google Photos, uh, you can ask a question. So I want to see pictures of dogs. So it's going to use uh, the speech recognition uh, thanks to the natural language processing, uh, natural language API. We're able to figure out so what do you want to search for. You want to search for dogs. OK. And then with Cloud Vision, uh, the Cloud Vision API allows you to find what's in a particular, particular uh, picture. And then it's going to return just the pictures of your dog. And it's basically everywhere, everywhere at Google, uh, and not just for consumer-facing apps, but also for things like uh, optimizing the performance, the, the, not the performance, the, the power consumption of data centers. Uh, usually it's a human-driven task, uh, but for some of our da data centers, we manage to reduce the power consumption by 40% when it's driven by uh, some machine learning uh, technology. And so this is the graph that Jeff showed, showing that it's really a, an exponential growth in terms of usage of machine learning uh, inside Google. Uh, but what's interesting is that, uh, so it's not just specific to, to Google, but other uh, companies like Facebook or, or others are also go, going uh, that way. Um, I mean, we focus a lot on mobile first apps and services and so on, but there's a clear shift, uh, a trend towards uh, putting machine learning everywhere. So you'd think, you know, yeah, but where should I put machine learning? I, I don't see a space, an area where I could add machine learning in my app. But actually, think about it and you'll see, uh, well, we have some good example there, but you'll suddenly find interesting ways to figure out trends out of the, the data that you have, etc. So the, the, we're focusing, we're going to focusing more and more, uh, small players but big players, uh, everyone's going to be focusing more and more on AI and machine learning. Um, at Google, uh, there's a kind of machine learning spectrum. So we've got uh, some APIs uh, that you can use um, from, for, as a developer. You just call a REST API or use a Java SDK, uh, Cloud Vision, Speech Recognition, etc. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got TensorFlow so that you can go hard and use uh, uh, the neural networks, define your neural networks, etc. And then in the middle, there's uh, Cloud ML, Cloud Machine Learning, uh, which is a new product which allows you to train your models in the cloud using the scalability of the Google Cloud Platform. And I'm going to do a little demo. Uh, we're developers, so I wanted to show you something from the command line. So it's a kind of a poor man assistant. So let me show you that. So the network should be working, so this should be cool. Oh, yeah, please, that would be awesome. So thanks a lot. So um, oh, VI, my friend VI is there. So wh what I'm doing, oops. Uh, uh, so it's here. So it's uh, like ten lines of code. I'm gonna ask a, a question. I'm gonna. I, I want to know what's the next talk about something uh, at the conference. So what I'm doing. So don't look at my API key, but I, I'll revoke it later on. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna use the speech API in order to uh, analyze what I'm saying. I'm gonna use natural language analysis, analysis uh, to uh, analyze the, the text of, of what will be uh, recognized. And then I use Google Custom Search to scrape from the, the, uh, the DevOps uh, website uh, to find the, the relevant talks. So this is the short version. I have a slightly longer version here with some output, but it's basically the same. So that's the one I'm, I'm going to uh, run here. Uh, DevOx Assistant. Uh, so I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to ask something. Uh, okay. Oh, it's off screen. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Okay. I can increase the font size a little bit. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. What is the next talk about machine learning? So it's uploading uh, the audio to Google Cloud Storage. I'm going to call the speech API for the recognition. And it's going to show the, uh, the payload, which are exchange. Oh, it's, it's, it's a bit fast. But if you see, so that's the return we got. 
uh, let me show that. So that's what was recognized, which is the next talk about machine learning. And so I extracted the, with the text analysis, I, I found the, the relevant words and the search keywords, I'm looking for machine learning and then, okay, uh, RVO, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that's the one talk about uh, machine learning wow. that's gonna happen. And wow. so you can ask different questions uh, I could do the others, but we... Yeah, that's fine. That's it just great. works. Wow. So that's pretty fun. And that's about it. Um, so thanks a lot uh, for having me here. And uh, I invite you to have a look at some of the other sessions this afternoon and tomorrow about uh, machine learning, uh, those APIs, etc. So I've got some uh, colleagues of mine and myself who will be on stage again. Uh, be sure to check out uh, this link and also if you go to each of these products and services uh, there's uh, there are some widgets that you can use within those web pages where you can actually try the speech recognition natural language analysis etc so thanks a lot thank you Guillaume and, uh, thanks. enjoy DevOps cool so that concludes the first part we're only five minutes late